Welcome back to United in His Purpose, where Ken Bostrom Ministries has the mandate to reach the lost, teach the found, and preach the word. Today I'm teaching, uh, finishing the three-part series of Understand the Hebrew, the Hebrew Calendar. Um, you know, it, we talked about that in the very beginning. In Matthew 13, 19, it says, if you don't understand, immediately the enemy will come and steal the word. And so we want to make it so easy for you to understand God's timing that we're offering the all the nine-point uh, handout uh, the nine-page handout of, of of my study, my outline that I'm doing here. And I all you have to do is email me at mbostrom2 at comcast.net. And uh, that's going across the, the screen now. And so uh, we're on part three of Understanding Hebraic Calendar, which is also known as the Sacred Calendar or God's Calendar. Last time we ended with uh, the lunar calendar talking about how the lunar calendar got started. It, it started in Genesis 1, 4. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs. That word signs there, it's, uh, it, it's uh, an it's the word ot in Hebrew, and it means a sign, a signal, or a warning. Now, when you come close to your destination, uh, let's say if you're leaving Minneapolis to come down to Houston, you would not, when you left Minneapolis, you would not see one sign for Houston, but yet you would know that that's your destination. And when you get closer, it, all of a sudden you see a sign and that kind of, oh good, I am on the right path. And so it, it, the closer you get to Houston, the more signs you're going to see, the more sig the more the, the bigger they're going to be and the closer they're going to be together. And so all of a sudden there are signs all over the place, two miles, one mile, you know, it, it, there are signs all over the place. It's the same thing. God is going to have more signs in the heavens, more signs prophetically on the earth with the nations. He's going to have all those signs converge together. And, and it's going to be so fun when you understand the timing of the Lord and start aligning and getting an understanding of what to watch and pray for. You know, uh, Jesus didn't say, I want you to watch and then speculate. No, he said, I want you to watch and pray. He didn't say, I want you to watch, oh, there's four blood moons, Jesus is coming, rapture ready. No, that, he, that's not what he said. He, he didn't want to tell you to speculate. He said, we're not to be ignorant of it, of the seasons, because he is going to fulfill all seven seasons. Four of them he has fulfilled. He has, uh, of, the, of the feast of the Lord, he has fulfilled Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost, and there's three feast seasons there in the fall of the year, and he has not fulfilled them yet. So if, if you know his seasons, um, you're going to be able to align with them better. That word seasons there is Moedim. They're fixed appointed time on God's calendar. They don't change. Now they have two New Year's. There's a civil uh, New Year. It's called Rosh Hashanah. Remember I told you Rosh is the head. Ha is the Shana year, head of the year. This is the year when the name, uh, uh, the number of the year changes. So this year we're in 5778. So when, when the uh, year changes in the fall of the year, it's on the Feast of Trumpets, it's called, and another name for it is Rosh Hashanah, uh, that is when the year changes to 5779. Now, if we're going to have a birthday party from Adam, there is no birthday cake that is big enough to handle all those candles. Uh, but that, is, that, that year isn't totally 100% accurate, but it's very close to around that time. Um, it's on the first day of the seventh month. Now on the sacred calendar, see they had been counting the months and the years since Adam's birth, but when, when, um, when it was time for the Jews to leave Egypt, or for the Hebrew Israelites to leave Egypt, um, if you notice I correct myself every once in a while because they were called Hebrew from the time of, of uh, Abraham 
to the time that Jacob's, uh, Jacob had the, the, the sons. Then they'd be called Israelites because Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And so they were called Israelites until they were, after the temple was destroyed and they were taken to Babylon, then they were called Jews. They're pretty much called Jews from that time on. But when we come to the 12th chapter of the book of Exodus, this is where God started another new year. Because they were going like, wait a minute, we've been counting months for the last six months. But God says, now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying, this month shall be the beginning of months. It shall be the first of the month of the year to you. So what happens is every six months you have a, a new year. So there's two main new years. You have one in the fall that keeps track of the months or the year number. And then you have one in the spring that, uh, that starts the, the, um, the sacred calendar or the sacred calendar. And so, and that's when the months change. So we're coming up to the, the month of Nisan, uh, which will be coming up this week that you're watching it. And, uh, and that begins the sacred calendar. That's when Passover happens. That's where unleavened bread. That's why it's so important to have a good uh, calendar for Christians so that you're both on the same calendar. You can, you can see what's happening on God's calendar, happening on your calendar. And um, so here on the 30th of this year, we're in the year 2018 right now. And so on the 30th, on the evening, remember, the Jewish day starts at sundown. Here we have the, uh, the eve of Passover. It falls on Good Friday this year, where the Christians uh, celebrate Good Friday. The Passover begins on Good Friday. Isn't that kind of interesting? And so uh, there you have this whole week here is a Feast of Unleavened Bread. So you can come into the timing of the Lord here, the, uh, the 16th, which is... Um, this Friday, uh, which is right now today, we are celebrating the eve of the New Year's Eve. You're celebrating New Year's Eve, the sacred calendar. And so um, biblical New Year begins. It, it, it actually has two, that month actually has two names. It's got the uh, Abib, which, which means the blossoming of the plants. The plants are coming alive and blossoming. And also it has a, the word Nisan. And we'll get into that some another day, but not today. So um, let's talk about the leap year on the Hebraic calendar. Uh, they put in a whole new month seven times in 19 years. Now I have a mathematical mind. I, I think I'm I'm, I'm not really good at remembering numbers because my mind is, you know, handling numbers so much. And I think in the banking industry, I was in banking for, I don't know how many years I was in banking, but um, I wasn't supposed to remember all the numbers. I wasn't supposed to remember the people's bank accounts and, and different things like that. And so, um, so I, I, I'm good at numbers, I just don't remember numbers. And so here, if you look here, the ones I've underlined, this is a chart of the 19 years. So you have two years, then the third year is a leap year. Then you have two years and third year is in a leap year. And then on number seven, you have the regular 12 months. And then on the eighth, you have a leap year again. And so you see here, it's not like our calendar where it has four years and then add a day. They have a specific mathematical pattern that they follow. And um, on, on that mathematical pa pattern, um, that keeps them into, into order with both the lunar and the solar. Because God said the sun and the moon, the sun and the moon together. And so they keep an accurate calendar. Uh, the, the, um, the leap year would be a dar one and a dar two. So that month, it would be like us having a March one and a March two, basically, it's about that time of the year. And so if, if we had, uh, if we were on a lunar calendar like that, we would have two, two months of March. And um, here is a scripture where First uh, Chronicles 1232, from the tribe of Issachar, all these men understood the signs of the times. I like how that reads that. Um, then we have the Sabbath. Now the Sabbath, 
Remember I told you uh, they were commanded to keep the Sabbath day holy. Now, keeping it holy doesn't mean rigid and to the law so that you're under so much bondage. God said the word holy means don't treat it like everything else. Treat it different. This is a day to rest your physical body. You know, um, a lot of people are just, a lot of the problems that they're having with their body and their health is they don't rest. They, they don't rest their body and they're wearing themselves out just trying to, you know, if you would trust God, if you listen to God, he would do the same thing for you like he did the children in the wilderness. He would give you twice as much so the next day you wouldn't have to rest. I've seen it happen in my life. I have seen that happen myself. And then God has a, a Sabbath for the, for the land. You know, you, do you know why our land is not giving the nutrition anymore? Because they don't let the land rest. Even the government, I'm, I'm originally from Minnesota, and the government will pay the farmers to let their land rest. They have to pay them to let the land rest you know, so that it can keep some nutrients. But our, our soil is, it does not have the nutrients because it's worn out. They don't let the land rest. And God had a command for the Jews, and that's found in, in Leviticus 25, three through four, and Deuteronomy 15, one through two, that they were commanded the seventh year, don't do anything to the land, let it rest. And uh, that's called a Shemitah year. And then we have uh, a Jubilee year. This is found in, Je in Leviticus 25, 8 through 9 and verse 13. It's the, a rest from the debt. It's a return of the land. It's a return of the slaves. So you see all these things about the Sabbath or the Shabbat. It would be the Hebrew. Uh, none of them are like, rid the, it's not, it's not supposed to be a bondage on you. It's supposed to bring freedom and rest. The word Shabbat actually means to cease or to rest. And so this is why uh, God wants us to rest is, is so that we will absolutely um, be refreshed. He wants the land to be refreshed. He wants you to have your debts canceled. He wants you to, to, to cancel your debts. Now, if, if this... Uh, the, and the next rest is going to be the millennium. Millennial, it'd be the 1,000 year Sabbath. You know, the word of God says a day in the Lord is as a thousand, as a thousand as, um, as a day. And so here we, we have, um, uh, with a millennial, there, there's going to be a rest for the earth. And... Um, so this is going to be the, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ upon this earth. It's like the seventh day. Really, if you look at a day being like a thousand, it's going to like, be like a seventh day. And so here, um, those are all commandments to rest. One of them is for our physical body. One of them is for the land. Uh, one of them is for the Lord's release, the Jubilee. Um, you know, what, what would God's Jubilee look like? If you're really thinking about this, what would God's jubilee, it would be God getting his land back, God getting his people back. And this really started, uh, if, you, if you look at the, the 50-year uh, segments, 1917, the Balfour Declaration, the Jews started going back into their land. 1967, 50 years later, they got Jerusalem back. And I remember when when we had the blood moon tetrad, remember 2014, 2015, the blood moon on Passover and Tabernacles, because both of them have full moons. And uh, the, everybody was saying, I had pastors call me up, Mary, is Jesus coming back in, in, uh, you know, with these blood moons? And I said, no. And they said, well, how can you be so emphatic about that? And I said, here again, I can hear the, the shepherd's voice. He told me to watch for 2017. That was the year I was supposed to watch for. He didn't see I'm coming back in 2017. He said, watch, that's going to be it. And, and if you look at, when I go back to the first three shows, when I talk about aligning with prophetic timing, 
uh, everything that happened in 2017, it was like the tipping point in heaven. And um, then with the, the, the three supermoons that we just had, there were like huge uh, laser beams in the sky just to say, look up, your redemption draweth nigh. So there's a lot of things happening. So if the... Um, if, if that would be like a Sabbath to God. You remember when he told Noah, uh, I'm only going to deal with mankind for 120 years? And a lot of people think that that's what we're supposed to believe, that we're going to be alive for 120 years. Uh, that's not my understanding. I don't have anything uh, against what they're saying, but um, my understanding is God was talking about a day as a year, a thousand years as a day, and a day as a thousand years. And so if, there, if you take 120 by 50, you get 6,000. So he says, I'm only going to deal with mankind for 6,000 years or 121 Jubilee days. Doesn't that make sense? And so uh, God doesn't change. Uh, man changes. God doesn't change. And so um, we're going to go back to talking about Rosh Kodesh. Now, when you start aligning with the um, with the with the calendar, you know each calendar has got um, uh, specific things on it. It's got a historical background. Now Ecclesiastics one nine says history merely repeats itself, and if you look at cycles of things, God has cycles, and if you start following the cycles in April, we're going to talk about how uh, April. It has cycles for the United States, and that's one you're going to really want to listen to and get my notes on that one. Um, there, there are cycles that I remember on 9-11, uh, I work with Cry Out America, who has a prayer at the uh, courthouse, every courthouse in the United States, that we, that we cry out for America, that we pray for America, that we have uh, some kind of prayer celebration or prayer service in front or inside of, the, uh, of every courthouse in the United States. So I've been in charge for Galveston County for, oh gosh, I can't remember how many years I've been in charge of that. But I remember one year, I was so grieved, I was so burdened, I, I was so burdened. I said, something is going to happen on 9-11. I said, the enemy loves to celebrate his victories. Some, something is going to happen on 9-11. We need to pray, not, not that day. We need to pray before that day. And so I had many people praying uh, for mercy for our nation. And so um, when I went to bed on 9-11 on that year, and I can't remember exactly what year, but you're gonna th you're gonna realize it when I say what's gonna happen. When I went to bed that night, I thought, "Wow, nothing happened. I was either wrong, or the prayers of the righteous availed much and diverted the whatever the enemy had planned against our nation." Because I I felt that like, there was gonna be a horrible attack. The next morning, I woke up and I found out what happened on 9/11, but it wasn't in our nation. It was in Benghazi, with our, with our embassy in Benghazi. It was on 9-11, because history merely repeats itself. And we can learn from history that, um, we can learn from history uh, that um, the enemy loves to celebrate his victories. He loves to celebrate his victories. And so when we, I don't want to get into April now, but... Um, when we come into um, the time of of the end, the the more the more we cl come closer to the things of the end, the more some of these things are going to start falling into place. Uh, for instance, just keeping in time of what month it is. When see, we're coming into the month of Nisan, the beginning of the months. So on, on the uh, 16th of March on 2018, in the evening, it begins the, the Hebrew uh, New Year that counts the months. So we need to know what's going to be happening that month so that we can be in sync with God's calendar. Well, um, I forgot where I was going to go with, 
that specifically right there. But when we come into tune with that, um, we can know what, what is happening. And there is something that the Jewish ladies uh, do right before Passover. And, it's, and we know it as spring cleaning. That they prepare themselves to meet the Lord. They prepare their house. Just like in, in really orthodox uh, families, they won't have any leaven in the household. They won't have anything with yeast in it or sugar, you know, anything like that. All the Fruit Loops grow out and, and all the bread and buns and everything, it just goes out. And then they, they have unleavened bread for that seven days. And so they prepare their house. Their house has spotless. And then six months later, they start preparing for the other new year. They prepare to meet the Lord on those high holy days that began, you know, the countdown to Yom Kippur, the, the Day of Atonement. And so that's where our seasons come from. That is the reason that we have spring house cleaning and fall house cleaning so that we can prepare our, ourselves to meet the Lord. And that's what, you know, when they do that, when I have followed that, uh, time of cleaning, uh, when I pull out a drawer, and I will purposely pull out a drawer and clean that drawer, and then I'll just, add, I, I mean, I'll do it quietly, and I'll just listen for the Lord, and I'll say, is there any clutter in my heart that needs to be cleaned out? And it's amazing how you can follow the cleansing power of God twice a year, and, and it's not like our calendar where you eat so much over the holiday, December holiday season, November and December. It's like, oh my gosh, you're just bulging with fat cells all over your body because you've eaten so much that, okay, I better, I better go on a diet in January. And, and that's not the, the way God's calendar is. He wants you to not just to fit back into your pants. He wants you to deny yourself and clean some things out of your life so that you can come closer to him because he wants to come close to you. But sometimes there are so many things that we have put in our life that have put a barrier between us. Do you know what? He's never moved. It's us that we need to come back to the Lord. He's never leave. He is never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He's, he's never going to quit loving you. Um, let's go back to uh, Rosh Kodesh. I got kind of carried away with that one. Uh, but I, I, get, I get pretty excited about the times and the seasons of the Lord because I find joy in it. I find joy. I find freedom. I find liberty. I hear God clearly in, in some of those days because you just set yourself to hear from God in those times. Now, um, Numbers 10.10 10 says, Blow the trumpets in the time of gladness too, sounding of your animal f annual festivals and at the beginning of each month. And blow the trumpets over your burnt offering and your peace offerings. The trumpet will remind the Lord, remind the Lord your God of his covenant with you. I am the Lord your God. Now that is powerful. It says, Those trumpets will remind the Lord your God. Uh, that's amazing that that won't rem just remind us. Those trumpets will remind the Lord our God. Now, there's some things that happen in, um, uh, I'm just going to find this, 1 Samuel 25. Uh, don't you wish I would have marked this before I came in? <laughs> that would have been the smart thing to do. 25. And this is with Jonathan and David. And um, 20, verse 3, And then David took an oath again and said, Your father certainly knows that I have found favor in your eyes. And he has said, Do not let Jonathan know uh, this, lest he be grieved. And truly, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, there is but a step between uh, me and death. And Jonathan said to David, Whatever you yourself desire, I will do it for you. And David said to Jonathan, now listen to this. Indeed, tomorrow is the new moon. In Hebrew, he was saying, tomorrow is the Rosh Kodesh. 
And I shall not fail to sit with the king and eat, but let me go that I may hide in the field until the third morning. And so what happened is they always celebrated the new moon with a feast, with a gathering. See, it wasn't, it wasn't dull or anything. It was feast. I, I don't know about you, but I, feasts are kind of fun. And, um, and so he said, if, if, you're, if the king misses me, he, because they were, he, it was just their custom always to celebrate together the new moon. And so that was a time that, um, and in Second Chronicles 2.4, Solomon uh, celebrated the new month. In Nehemiah 10.32, Nehemiah celebrated the new month. Second Kings 4.23, the Shunammite woman. Remember the Shunammite woman and her son died? She closed the door on her dead son. She went out to find the prophet. And, and she went to find out where the prophet was. And she asked this man, where is the prophet? Um, I think it was Elijah. Elijah or Elisha. Um, and, and he said, well, why are you looking for the prophet? It's not the Rosh Kodesh. It's not the new moon. You know why? Because they were used to looking for a prophet if it was the first of the month, because the prophets would speak. It was a, a special day that the prophets would get a word from God and they would hear the word of the Lord. There's something about hearing the word of the Lord on the first day of the month. If you set yourself apart and just, just talk to the Lord, he, it, it's somehow in the word uh, it, that that would be a time to keep holy. It was a sounding a shofar. It was special sacrifices. It was a Sabbath rest. And it was a family gathering and a festival. It was, the celebration was joyful. It was a day of rest. It was special offerings. It was worship. And in uh, Isaiah 66, 23, it says, And it shall come to pass from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come and worship before me, says the Lord. Malachi 3 says, I am the Lord and I change not. And God wants us to come into an alignment with a rhythm. He doesn't want you walking you out of step. He wants us to be together. He wants us to be in unity. He wants us to align with heavenly patterns. And I pray that you are coming into an alignment. Uh, go ahead and, and email me, and I will be happy to send you the nine pages of my outline. God bless. Have a good day.